term handcrafted gets thrown around a lot these days. It's become a movement, a trend, that can obscure the passionate folks who actually make amazing things by hand. Their remarkable stories need to be told, and I'm going to find them. I'm Anthony Bourdain, and this is Raw Craft. New Orleans isn't just about the food and nightlife, it's about the music. At any given moment in the birthplace of jazz, hundreds of musicians strum guitars, pluck basses, blow trumpets, and bang on drums. But for raw attitude, the saxophone takes center stage. Unapologetic, loud, but also at times hauntingly beautiful, the sax holds a special place in this town. And the guy who's been designing and restoring them for the last 40 years is something of a legend. His name is Steve Goodson. He's one of the best designers and repair specialists in the world. He's also a tinkerer and an innovator, a genius who loves the science behind acoustics. But make no mistake, he's a bit of a magician as well. What's the difference between a pretty good saxophone and a really good saxophone? Where's the, the, the real craftsmanship come down to? Assuming that everybody's done their math right and all these holes are in the right place, then the real key to a really great instrument, first, choice of materials, and then very careful adjustment of each and every one of those little parts. Careful adjustment. Sounds like going back to the chiropractor to get your back cracked, right? Well, yes, if your back were made up of over 500 different moving, largely metallic parts, that's a lot of adjustment requiring, in some cases, permanent custom modifications. Here, Steve is upgrading the resonators, which are small metal discs that reflect sound back into the holes of a sax. He's also changing the pads that help create an airtight seal over those holes. This is a product we make right here in New Orleans that seals the pad, absolutely. Now, kangaroo leather has a wonderful quality in that it's the strongest leather on the planet, and it doesn't stick won't stick to the tone holes. Right. That's because kangaroos, they're marsupials. They're not like us. Uh, our cells and our skin are kind of at random like felt. Kangaroos are a nice lattice. Now you you design these things Absolutely. from the get-go. We the, start the, the, with a piece of paper right. and draw it out. You have to be a sax player to understand how to make the damn things. You can't go buy a book about how to design saxophones. There aren't any. Mm -hmm. And of course, a lot of what we do is trial and error. You know, I'll, I'll, I'll build 10 things and only one of them really works well, and that's how I learned, but I, I learned that nine things didn't work very well. Over the last 50 years of playing, tinkering, and innovating the sax, Steve's mastered everything from how to smooth out a wrinkle in the bell flare to hand-facing a custom mouthpiece. It's a subtle and completely different discipline from tackling the body. And it's the one piece of the craft that Steve says took him the longest to master. It took me longer to learn how to do this than anything else I do. It took me uh, probably 15, 20 years just to get my chops together. And what would you call this if you were going to put this in the most technical scientific term possibly? This is a delivery system for what? Wave dispersion? That's, a, that's an oscillator. An oscillator converts the air pressure from your respiratory system into a wave that the horn can use to make music. But I mean, it's also, this is the connector. I mean, if you're, yeah. gonna, if you're gonna go, your you're body. put this into a metaphysical descriptive, connecting lungs to fingers, human to device. Absolutely. Um, the gateway from the soul. Yeah. I should write your ad copy. Yeah, 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 yeah. Whether you call it metaphysical or scientific, all of this knowledge has culminated in the design of what Steve calls his masterpiece horn, the Category 5. A sax so acoustically powerful that it can only be named using the hurricane wind scale. Wow, even I can tell the difference. Yeah. And I fell asleep next to a, a Marshall stack at a Blue Oyster Cult concert <laughs> back in uh, 1979. So my hearing is seriously damaged. Yeah. That, that, that's a, that is a, a great leap forward in, the, in the, the sound department. Well, there's no category six hurricane. It only goes up to category five. That's like turning so, your amp up to 11? 11, exactly. <laughs> it is literally a storm of a saxophone. 
there, there was never a budget involved. It's, right. it's just what is the best way to do this. What kind of a general price range are we talking about? We're talking a very specific price range. $15,000 and not a penny less. You'll wait to get it and you'll thank me when you receive it. <laughs> oh, wow. Okay. Nobody has a horn priced higher than that, but it does more. I'm Bill Clinton. I want one. How Bill, long do I have to Bill wait? Bill doesn't have that model. Bill has a Super 400. Right, but if Bill, <laughs> if, if Bill called and he had the cash on hand, how long does he have to wait? Nine months minimum on those. You're not speeding it up for a bit, Bill for Clinton? Bill, no, no. I guess what I'm, I'm, I'm asking is, we already know there's magic in music, okay? Otherwise, you wouldn't do it. We already know that. I mean, there, there are not a lot of the senses that can transport you to a different place. Smell can do it, taste can do it, but nothing more powerfully than music can take you someplace. That, that's magic, right. you know? Is there magic lurking in the instrument itself? Well, it's not magic, it's science, you know? <laughs> It's science, but it, it, it's it's very much a black art. When you got your first truly awesome sax and then you held it in your hands, did you think this is uh, you know a magical scepter that I can rule the world with? Oh yeah, because it's like uh, like pulling out Excalibur. It's like wow, look what I can do with this. I, I love the saxophone. I mean, to me, it's an instrument that can sound really sublime or really nasty. If you want it to sound really nasty and dirty, and it's very expressive of emotion in a way that I think other, uh, a lot of other, most other instruments aren't. Thank you so much. Great music. Beautiful thank instrument. You. Thank you, thank you. And one of my favorite towns in the world. We're gonna try this out. We hope you like it.